my hair is crazy. Hi everybody. Um, I didn't do a live yesterday, so I'm going to do one today. I'm not wearing any makeup because I don't care, but I did change my shirt for you, so be glad that I changed my shirt. I um, want to give a shout out to Dames Ella Mode for the little pendant. So thank you, Dames Ella Mode. I bought this from her and it's fabulous. But I'm going to do a 1938 catalog today. And I am going to try to keep this kind of short because I want to go over and check out Sense and Sensibility is going to be doing a like watch party for the new Emma. So go and check her out after this if you feel like renting the new Emma and then um, uh, doing a chat. <laughs> 30, so modern. Hello, other Lauren, <laughs> virtuous courtesan Lauren. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around. We're gonna look at a 1938 catalog, but I'm gonna keep it short. All right. So here is a sale catalog for Chicago mail order from 1938. And this is so cute. If you don't know what these are, they, um, they had patterns and such to make tablecloth dresses. So you can make these out of tablecloths. I have a 1930s pattern to make one out of a tablecloth that I'm thinking about putting out. So this is 1938 and notice the matching shoes that go with the border. I wish we could get stuff like this today. So this is the sale catalog from August 1938. And 1938 is one of my favorite, favorite years because everything was just so whimsical. So check out this, like all the different color buttons. And she's got applique up here on her shoulders. And there's things that might be questionable today, but it's, it's super fun. Look at the lacing. Lacing was a big thing in the 1930s. So she's kind of got a fake corset and her little head scarf. And notice that they're doing swing dancing. They're jitterbugging, which is quite cute. Here is another page. Look, she's got buckles and she's got her initial. It was a really fun late 30s thing to put an initial on your um, accessories. So I have a couple L's for Lauren. She's jitterbugging. She's got a, a nice pleated skirt there and a print. This one looks like she has embroidery. First or last? What? Oh, uh, I'm guessing first name. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm assuming first name. So, Rayon. So this is 1938. Okay, this is one of my favorite pages of all time. <laughs> if you've seen my blog, I made these, a uh, reproduction of these. And um, sure, and uh, they're on my blog. I actually sold mine because they were way too small. So these are called Farmerettes, and notice the white sunglasses. So a couple years ago in fashion, white sunglasses were a thing, and I bought some because in the 1930s they were a thing too, the late 1930s. More little overalls and Farmerettes. And I have an overall pattern on my website that you can use to recreate this kind of a look. These ones look a lot like my smooth sailing trousers. So you can put a little pocket on the front of your smooth sailing trousers and add stripes down the side and on the pocket. Hello, hello everybody. So that would be super fun. Um, this would be really great in cotton pique. It says rayon shark skin, which is impossible to find anymore. So it was a matching um, top and pants. So that like pantsuit look was a really big thing in the late 1930s and into the 1940s. So very cute. Look at the great border print here with the fruit. And again, that looks like a tablecloth. I mean, if you find a tablecloth that has a lot of stains on it, you might be able to repurpose it. Now, tablecloth co uh, collectors would probably kill me if I said to cut up a perfectly good tablecloth. So I suggest finding something that you definitely cannot get anything out of. And um, maybe you can try something like this. She's got a cape with little slits for her arms. And look at the little puffs. And the, like the guy over her shoulder, what's up with that? Is he like a phantom or is he actually there? <laughs> Here's a great way to use directional stripes. And her skirt, you can see, is cut in a circle so that it, it falls down at the sides. It's just like the 1950s circle skirts. They were a thing in the late 1930s as well. So in the late 1930s, or sorry, post-war 1940s, they went back 
to these pre-war styles and you saw a lot of circle skirts and a lot of fashion, it kind of just picked up where it left off with the big skirts. Because during World War II, of course, they had all the fabric rationing. Swing high and flare low. Look at that great skirt. And again, there's her initial right there. She's got buckles on her belt. Ah, yeah, striped fabric is perfect to use for a circle skirt because it falls down at the sides, like up and down, and then diagonal, uh, horizontal? I don't know, I'm bad at directional. So look at this with the polka dots here. She's got the top, and then she's used the polka, they've used the polka dots here on wilt pockets. That's pretty great. Hi! Monogramming, yeah, so you could monogram it, or you could use a little pin with your initial and put it on your accessories, which would be really fun. Pretty gathers there. Okay, this is super cute. So this style was really popular in the late 1930s as well for kind of the dirndl look. It's uh, It had a revival in fashion during that time. And can you imagine how great this would look when you were swing dancing? It would just flare out so pretty. And look at these puff sleeves. Like these puff sleeves mean business right here. That's fun. Ruffles. And here's another use of stripes where they put it on the bias so that it makes a V. And then here it goes side to side and here it goes up and down. So there's lots of clever, clever things you can do with stripes in the 1930s. And she's got the same thing going on here. And again, the lacing and the belts. And then these big tie belts were a thing too. You'll see those a lot in the late 1930s. Here she's got a silly little hat. I have a hat like this. It's absolutely ridiculous. And she's got the patterned on the jacket. And then again here at the waist of the dress. I love these sets. I need to make more sets like this. It's so fun. She looks very much like Carol Lombard, I think. Young and lively. Another pleated skirt. What's the one with Ginger Rogers where she has the pleated skirt and she does a dance number? Do you guys know? I think that was around this time. Check out these shoulders. That is just so 1930s. It's like futuristic 1930s, right? And this looks like this is actually seamed. I don't know if that's seamed fabric or if it's a print with stripes. It's like, how much can you have going on in one dress? Swing time, there you go. So yeah, perfect, because this is all swing influenced. Hey, you guys knew. So um, she's got buttons, she's got a collar, she's got these wacky sleeves, she's got pockets, she's got this crazy belt, and she's got pleats. <laughs> And this one over here, it like has all the things going on too. So she's got the huge lapels with the buttons that attach it to the jacket. She's got the buttons up the high-waisted skirt. She's got a belt, like she's just doing the whole thing. Uh, yeah, they came back in the 1950s, the pleated skirts. So it was like I, I said it just a bit ago, all these things were in fashion in the late 1930s and then it picked up right back again after World War II. Really fun. And this tiny little pleating at this collar. That would be a really easy thing to add that would help you get a really period look. Well, not easy. You'd have to pleat it on fabric. This guy is like telling you to buy stuff. And they're telling you monthly payments. We've got a chenille bedspread. And I obviously always talk on the phone like this. I don't know about you guys. Fun little hats. Look at this one. She looks like a car. Like that is seriously a hood ornament on a car. The mini way hat. Oh look, you can wear it all different types of ways, front to back and side to side and everything. Now this, <laughs> I'm not sure what to think about this one. What do you guys think? Oh, I love chenille bedspreads too. My mom collected them, so I got that bug from her. This is quite cute. Open crown with the lacing holding the scarf in place and a kind of a um, visor. I love 30s hats because they were so wacky, especially this one here. <laughs> Tootsie Roll hat. Totally a Tootsie Roll hat. Yes. <laughs> you have extra grow green ribbon. Go ahead and make yourself a little Tootsie Roll to stick on top of your head. Beautiful little suits. 
I love the cut of this one right here. That'd be great on PK. Also, I have PK on my site still. I have rolls and rolls of white PK if you guys need PK. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, we're in Lucy where she goes nuts buying hats. Yes, more hats. What is going on here? What is going on here? There's some 30s styles that are so wacky that you have to be a total uh, 1930s nerd to get it. Very cute. Hi, everybody. Look at this great sweetheart neckline with the lace. Very pretty. And she's got her flower cluster. Did you guys see Dressed in Time's outfit she wore yesterday for her birthday? She had flowers everywhere and it was fabulous. Oh, this is great. She's put in the insets of the pleats a contrasting color. So you've got your print, which who could ever match that up that great? I mean, Virtuous Courtesan would because she's nuts, but the rest of us would be like, eh, good enough. <laughs> I mean, nuts in a good way because she's so fabulous, of course. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, she tries to hide him from Ricky. Yeah, I remember that. That would be me. <laughs> We're not going to talk, <laughs> called out. We're not going to talk about how many hats are in my closet. <laughs> so this is pretty cool. This is a solid sheer over a print underdress. So that looks like it's a net, huh? A net and then the, the sheer so that it just peeks through. And that gives an interesting texture. I like how they've done it on the sleeves. Do you know like 1830s sleeves they did, or 1820s and 30s, they did this, but with long sleeves? That's a fun way to make something look authentic. Did that level of matching. <laughs> it has to have been magic involved in matching that. <laughs> like they're showing how full the sweep of the skirt is. That's a girl's dress. I mean, I would have loved having a skirt that full when I was a girl. Smocking is still a thing. Or shearing. Oh, I have a little thing. Here they've got ribbons sewn to a sheer. I believe that um, Eva dress did a dress with ribbons sewn on top of a sheer like that. And then she's got an interesting braid going on up there. Oh, it's not focusing. So she's got pleats, a braid, shearing, sheer sleeves, ribbon attached to the sleeves, and a belt. Oh, a collection of McCall's. The McCall's sewing patterns are my very favorite ones from the late 1930s. Early to late 1930s are my favorite ones. I have a 1939 McCall pattern catalog, a big, big one that I can share in a future video if you guys want. Here's actual smocking, not shearing, and little, like, <laughs> ball tassels right here. Very fun. Some slips. This has an interesting V inset at the front. And she's got embroidery. This one has shearing at the front, which might lay funny. I'm not sure about that. And I guess you'd have to tailor your dress depending on the slip. More slips. She's got like a butterfly up here. She has lace at the bottom and at the top. Very cute little slips. Panties. Summery knit rayon. Those are probably comfy. There's like the briefs are coming into fashion. Advanced 1951, that would be amazing to see that catalog. I only have two catalogs. One is a 1950s advanced and one is a 1939 McCall. My 50s advanced one's really stinky though. It must have been stored wrong. Here's a great house coat. I know people are sewing house coats right now for the social distancing challenge. Pajamas. Cute, cute little house coats. And loungewear. Girdles. So you notice they still called them corsets. In a lot of 30s magazines, they still called girdles corsets. And these are last decks. So this is kind of like modern um, shapewear. So this would be a knit that you would pull on. So it kind of gets, which, which pajama set? This one here? This one is really cool. 
I love the polka dot accents. Let's see what else we got. Bras, two for 21 cents. Notice that there's no cup sizes on the bras. It's only by bust measure. Yeah, that one is my favorite too. Now these ones are a little bit more shaped with cups. Cups started coming in more in the 1930s. Here's socks and ankle socks and saddle shoes we think of as 1950s, but it definitely was a 1930s swing thing. So you see a lot of collegiate girls wearing stripy socks with saddle shoes. What's on this one? Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I'll take that, that's pretty fun. I forgot that 1938 is the year that Snow White came out. Stockings. So these were still fully fashioned at the time, which means they were woven to the shape of the leg. More stockings. The head scarves were a thing. Do you, have you guys seen, um, oh, what's that documentary about the ladies in the mansion? Grey Gardens, she was still wearing that style. Evie, I think her name was. Little girls. Here's like diaper covers. Those are still a thing for people that do cloth diapering. Snow White came out in 1937. Okay, well, I guess she was just still in style. Socks for men, yeah. Here's initials again. Big, big thing to do initials. Little zippers. This is quite fun. What does it say? Magazine print bags. So this was all different types of magazines. Man, that would be worth so much money today. Little boleros, hinkies. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> and an open crown turban. That is so funny. Okay, now is the medical stuff. So, yeah, that we're glad that isn't a thing anymore. Measuring instructions, monthly payments, jewelry. There's some cute novelty stuff here. Watches, cutlery. We have a little bit of everything. I didn't realize Chicago Mail Order did um, furniture as well as clothing. Or maybe I just didn't pay attention. Oh, you want me to go back to the medical stuff? Let's see. We've got sanitary napkins. Um, cleaning things that is not recommended today. Suppositories. Modesty shields and sanitary belts. So this was for your period. Blemishes, freckle cream, aspirin. Suitcases. Home barber sets hair stuff, combs, and this is pretty cool, a thing to roll your hair. Your grandma had one of the small box cameras. Yeah, they're quite fun, aren't they? My cousin gave me one for my birthday. You're welcome. So we have different things. Here's fabrics, beautiful fabrics. All these rayons, great, great floral prints. More floral prints, cotton batiste, Hollywood prints, Mexican style prints. That was a big thing, Mexican style stuff in the late 1930s. And cotton broadcloth. So cotton broadcloth would be like for house dresses and things like that. Batiste would be like summery, nice frocks. Um, rayon, of course, was nice dressier day frocks. Pretty shrunk. <laughs> yeah, sanferized is what they used to call it, and they still use that. Because cotton broadcloth, if you've ever used cotton that's not pretty shrunk, oh my goodness, <laughs> it shrinks so much. Wool batting, different things for house needs, bed spreads, curtains. Hello from London. I am doing well. Hello from San Diego. We are doing well. I hope that everything's going good in the UK. <laughs> All right. Menswear. 
These are great collegiate 1930s styles. So if you've heard of Oxford bags, this is what the actual Oxford bags usually looked like. They usually weren't as wide. And again, there's the initials. Men's jackets, shirts, lovely action back, belted back, whatever you want to call them. My grandma called these action back, and I know that guys now call them belted backs. Men's workwear. They always look so flat in these illustrations. Incredible waste, yes. <laughs> Take care too, Nadia. Here's um, boys' clothes, more boys' clothes. Boys, do you guys want to look at this boy stuff or are you kind of over it? Men's shoes, I think we're pretty much done with the boy stuff. Work shoes haven't changed very much. Men's dress shoes. Little girls' shoes. Ah, nursing shoes. Those are quite similar. Love 30s fashions for men. They look so smart, don't they? That's actually, I met my husband when we were both doing vintage, and I met, and he was wearing head to toe 1930s every single day, and it was pretty awesome. Now we're uh, pretty lazy. <laughs> look at these. Aren't those great? Love, love, love. Look at the color. I wonder what colors. Let's see what it says. Multicolor doesn't say. It just says multicolor. Hmm. Step out and style. Look how square those toes are. I would not have expected that because usually they're so round. Great 1930s shoes. Very pretty. Look at these great. They're like Hirachi sandals kind of. It says uh, white with red trim. Oh, that'd be so pretty. All black or all white smooth leather. Leather. These ones are really pretty too. White with red or all white. These ones were white. Interesting little cutouts that are uh, circular. More little. Those are very high for 1930s. Saddle shoes and sporting shoes. A friend turned me on to using bowling shoes and just removing the um, the spikes, or not spikes, golf shoes, and removing the spikes to get that look now. Pretty little Oxfords. More pretty shoes. These are very sensible here. Color, wedgies. Wedgies have a different meaning today. <laughs> Blue with cork, it looks like. And notice that they're wearing these ones with socks. That was a very sporty late 1930s thing. I love the colors too. This, these ones she's wearing with slacks. These are fun. These kind of made a comeback in the 70s, didn't they? And look at this. You still kind of find granny shoes that look similar to this. Oh, and this one too. Is that a call to wedge heel? Oh, that's why it's saying wedgies. Oh, it just made sense. <laughs> oh, more snow white shoes for children and misses. I bet these are ex exceptionally rare. I've never seen these. Have you guys ever seen existing ones of these? If you have, uh, make sure you leave me a comment. Those are so cool. All right. Great little sandals. So with socks or without socks. Hi! Make This Look is having a great social distancing challenge right now. So I suggest you go and check her out. And there's a coupon code for my e-patterns if you go check out hers too. I'm not telling you what it is. You have to go follow her for it. Look at these sandals with this matching purse. Matching purses. I love this one. Three piece outfit. So there's the headscarf again. With uh, Notice that in all the headscarves it's tight under the chin and you still see Queen Elizabeth do this. 
Oh, sure. Glad to help spread all the love. We need all the love right now, don't we? All right. Oh, this is the last page. So we've got cute little girls' dresses, a slip. Oh, there's initials again. And she's got little flowers on her slip straps. That's quite cute. Fabric, fairy tale designs. It's not specifically saying it's Snow White this time. Gosh, I wish I could get all these prints. They're so cute. Here's some sweaters. Chic, youthful, all wool. Men's shirts and men's trousers with initials. Okay, guys, I think that's it. Um, I'm going to go pop over to Sense and Sensibility and see if I can catch her chat about the new Emma. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you hang in there. Know that I'm thinking of you guys all. Um, let see, turn it around. Okay. All right, my hair's crazy. I'm praying for you guys. I hope everything's good, and hang in there. We're all in this together. Okay.